You're listening to Flaunt. Find your sparkle and create a life you love. After infidelity or betrayal, have you been betrayed by life, your body, or someone that you love? You're not alone. No matter what you've been through, Naked Self-Worth helps you regain confidence, joy, and enthusiasm so you can create a life you love and flourish. Tune in weekly and learn how. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you been struggling lately? Relationship issues impact every area of your life. When I found out about my husband's infidelity, I was so devastated. I could barely function. Sleeping was impossible because I couldn't shut off my brain. Eating was a challenge because I felt nauseous all the time. And for the first month or so, everything felt pointless. Whether you're having trouble sleeping, feeling hopeless, or just can't focus, BetterHelp is here to help you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help. You can talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your convenience. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that might not be available in your area. Just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you'll be matched with a therapist in under 24 hours. Then you can schedule secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages, and everything you share is completely confidential. I know that confidentiality was important for me, especially early on when I couldn't even get my own mind wrapped around what was happening. And it was so comforting to be able to speak with someone candidly about everything I was going through to validate that what I was feeling and experiencing was completely normal. You can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Special offer to flaunt, create a life you love after infidelity and betrayal listeners. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash flaunt. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash flaunt. Flaunt, F-L-A-U-N-T. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. Hello and welcome to Flaunt. Find your sparkle and create a life you love after infidelity or betrayal. I'm Laura Cheadle and this show is like literally the be all end all of all infidelity shows. And I am not kidding. (laughs) This is the one reason that all cheaters cheat. And I'm not joking with that either. This show, we're going to talk about the one reason that all cheaters cheat. And I'm just going to spill the beans right here at the outset too. The one reason that all cheaters cheat is because They are trying to fill something inside of them that they don't know how to express. The one reason all cheaters cheat is because they are trying to fill something inside that they can't express. Now, I personally think all the like, what kind of affair is it stuff is BS. There's different excuses but there's not different kinds of affairs. All affairs happen for one reason, because the cheater can't fulfill their need and because they don't know how to express that need and they don't know how to get that need met. Now, that need is different. That need is different for every person who cheats, but it's not about the need. Too often we get really hung up on what was the need And why didn't I fulfill it? Why wasn't I pretty enough or smart enough or good enough in bed? Or why wasn't I validating or sexy enough or whatever it was? We get focused on the need and how we can meet the need or how we should have met the need. Or we're jealous because their affair partner better met the need and we won't give them the opportunity to meet that need. We get all focused on that need. And while 
it's good to focus on that need if you plan on staying together and you're trying to work it out and you want to ensure that in the future your partner won't cheat again then that's a really valid conversation to have. And we're going to have that conversation a a little bit later in the show. But back it up one step further. It's not about the need. It's about the fact that the cheating partner can't express their need. And they can't express how they want that need fulfilled. That's the problem. That is the root cause of the affair. Not the need. Not the need not getting met. The root cause of the affair is that the cheating partner cannot communicate effectively or about what they want, about what they need. Oftentimes, they can't even communicate about what that pain is. That's why so often it turns kind of general and people will say, I just need to figure myself out. I don't know. It's like a midlife crisis or something. I just, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. It's not you. It's me. I just have to figure myself out. I don't know. Well, that's what caused the problem is not knowing, not being clear on who they are and what they want and what they need to fulfill that need inside of them. (sighs) Let's take a collective breath. (laughs) How are you feeling? That's a lot. That's a lot, a lot, a lot. One of my favorite phrases comes from Socrates, and it's know thyself. And as you know, as you probably know if you've been listening to this for a while, I use the art of burlesque in my coaching, and I have also actually danced burlesque. It's an art form that I love. And my dancer name is Socrates, which is a play on the name Socrates, who is my favorite philosopher. And I love Socrates, but also when I went to law school, you were taught using the Socratic method. So that heightened my love for Socrates. I love the Socrates play on that too, because I do yoga. I'm into energy and the chakras. And because I'm flirty and I like to play in teas. So my dancer name is Socrates. Socrates said, know thyself. Socrates always says, show thyself. Do you get how funny that is in burlesque? Show yourself. Ha <laughs> ha. But also in life, Show yourself, know yourself, and show yourself. Because when you know yourself, and then you show yourself, you have a fighting chance of getting your needs met. Or at least learning that. In the situation I'm in, I cannot get my needs met. So I either need to suck it up and not get my needs met, or I need to leave. But when you know yourself and you're brave enough to show yourself, that's where healing happens. That's where the good stuff in life happens. That's where clarity and confidence comes from. I know myself. I know that I do not tolerate physical abuse from anybody. Friendship, romantic relationship. Physical abuse, hands on me, absolutely no-go zone. Hard boundary, no way, no excuses, no how. I know that about myself. I do not like my body touched or hurt. I show myself by expressing that. I expressed it to people that I dated. And in in a way, it would be kind of funny, but sometimes I'd be like, just so you know... (laughs) We're not wrestling. You're not hurting my body. You're not touching my body. I'm very protective of this. I don't like the idea of being hurt or injured. Hands off of me. Consent is a big thing. We're not just going to play around and you're going to hurt me. 
And you're not going to ever, ever, ever lay a hand on me or I am out of here and I am pressing charges. I was not afraid to show that to people. I was not afraid to communicate my boundary because it's clear and I know it. It doesn't matter if it is needing extra time off at work. If it's don't cuss at me, don't yell at me, don't do this when I'm in the house. Whatever your boundaries are, you have to know what they are and you have to communicate them to the other person. And then if that person agrees to those boundaries and you're all safe and you go forward, you've got a good relationship. And if they don't, and if they violate those boundaries, it's up to you to re-communicate, re-establish and say, you got one chance here and I'm not doing it again, just so we're very abundantly clear right now. Or to say, "Uh uh-uh, I communicated those to you very clearly and I'm done now. That's your choice. Having a boundary means you get to choose if you enforce it or if you give somebody another chance. While I personally think it is fine to give somebody another chance, depending, depending on what that is, because that gives you an opportunity to further clarify, I really don't think it is pretty much ever okay to give somebody a second or a third or a fourth or a fifth or a sixth chance. But again, that's just me. And those, again, are my boundaries for me knowing myself and showing myself. I'm telling you who I am and I'm telling you what I want. So, when somebody cheats on us, they don't know themselves, and or they haven't shown themselves. I just wasn't happy. I'm not feeling fulfilled. I don't know what's wrong with me. These are things that are so common that cheating partners say. It's not you, it's me. I need space to figure myself out. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what happened. Well, are you kidding me? If you don't, nobody else will. If you don't know what's going on in you, nobody else will. It's up to you to get that figured out. Yes, you might have a conversation with me and that conversation might go something like, I don't know what's going on with me. I'm feeling burned out. I'm feeling exhausted. I'm feeling like, oh my God, maybe my life passed me by. Maybe this isn't what I wanted. I, I, I love you and I love our life, but I'm not feeling like all this spicy stuff and this passion like, like I felt when we were first dating. You can explain all of those things. And in a conversation with your partner, they can help bring out what it is that you're feeling wow, I felt that way too. And here's what I discovered. Or I don't know. Maybe we need counseling. Maybe we should go to our church and talk to somebody. I bet other couples have been through this. I know. Let's invest in a coaching program for our marriage. Maybe it's intimacy skills. Maybe it's communication. Maybe Maybe we need to just shake things up and do something totally outside the box. Maybe we should just get daycare for the kids and go away for the weekend and talk and be together again. See what I'm saying? Even when you don't know what's wrong with you, a healthy person will go to somebody and will talk and will say, help me figure myself out. They will go and get a book. They will go to church. They will go to counseling. They will do something to help get themselves figured out. What a truly healthy person will not do then is continue down the rabbit hole of, I just don't know what's wrong with me. I just don't know what's wrong with me. And I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to tell anybody because I don't want people to know that I think something is wrong with me. And that's what leads to affairs. Not knowing what's wrong with you and then not talking to your partner about it leads to affairs. And I know I'm being blunt and I know I'm being direct here, but it's the truth. 
everybody goes through a midlife crisis, a quarter life crisis, a three quarters life crisis. And, and I just gained weight crisis and I just lost my job crisis. Identity crises are common. Identity crises happen more than once in a lifetime. If you're dealing with a sick child, aging parents, financial issues, any of those normal life things, it's going to cause a crisis inside. And when you don't talk about it to your spouse, guess what? It leads to an affair. Because here's what happens inside the mind of your cheating partner. They go, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm not happy, whatever it is. I'm not feeling validated. I'm not feeling the spice. I'm not, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I'm stressed from COVID still. It doesn't matter. And they internalize that. And they think, because nobody wants it to be their fault, right? None of us want it to be our own problem. So they think, ugh, I feel really bad. The person that I'm closest to is my spouse. Huh. I bet they're causing it. Hmm. Maybe if they're not actually causing it, they're the person that I'm with the most often. So maybe I'm with, if I'm with somebody else different, then I'll be different too. Maybe it's them. It's not me. It's them. That's it. It's them. And I just need to be around somebody different, somebody who gets me. Because I don't get me. I bet somebody else is going to get me. That's it. I'm going to be with somebody and they're going to get me. And they're going to shine this light on my insides, on my heart, on my soul. And they're going to give me all of this stuff that I didn't even know that I needed. Oh my God, it's going to be amazing. It's truly like the fairy tale. They're going to do this for me. They're going to love me. They're going to validate me. They're not going to reject me. They're not going to be too tired for me. They're not going to try to control me around money. They're not going to do any of these things that my spouse does that clearly has been my problem. Do you see how that line of thinking starts spiraling in on itself? How it suddenly starts making sense that it isn't me. It's just that I'm with my spouse and I need somebody to help me. Having an affair is a cry for help. Having an affair is a huge cry for help. And here's what happens around that. The cheating partner has the affair because it's this big cry for help because they don't know what they want. They don't know how they feel. They can't put words on the emotions. They just know that all this stuff is happening inside and that it doesn't feel good. So they have this affair. And then one of two things happens. They kind of both happen too, sometimes along the way. It starts off meeting those needs. It's new and it's different. It's this whole fresh start. And they're like, woo, this is super exciting. This is really, really good. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, it's so true. This is what I needed. This person knows me. Now, let me tell you, that person doesn't know them. But what that person does, what the affair partner does do, is they reflect back differently. They reflect back differently. Your spouse opens up to them. I've been so miserable and I didn't know why. And then you came along and I feel so alive. I feel so amazing. This is everything that I've ever needed. And the affair partner feels that hype and believes that hype too. And they're like, woo. And it'll spiral up. But inevitably, the affair partner is not who they needed. It's not who they wanted. And the affair partner is interested in themselves and themselves only. They're not interested in you. They're actually not even interested in your partner. They're interested in themselves and meeting their own needs. So all of a sudden they come out with all all of these explanations. 
and those explanations confirm what your cheating partner thought. It was you. It was your fault. It's that darn wife. She's obsessed with the kids. She let herself go. She's busy all the time. She's not doing this. She's not doing that. She's not having fun with you anymore. The affair partner is saying that not because they really believe it, but because it's their way to keep this affair going. So they confirm it's confirmation bias in a way. Everything that they hear your partner say, they glob onto and they make it worse. Yeah. If she loved you, she wouldn't do that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You've done this and you've done that and you've give, 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 give. And I can't believe she wouldn't do that. If I were in her shoes, I would appreciate this. and I would do da, 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 blah, 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 blah. Well, then guess what happens to your partner after a while? Sure, they might be believing it for a while. But then at some point... At some point, either the clarity that the affair partner did give them actually kicks in, or the insanity of what the affair partner gave them kicks in, and they go, oh, oh, that's not what's going on. Wow, I hear her talking about my spouse in a way that really doesn't feel authentic. Or, hmm, she did nail this. And that's been my problem. And that's what's really brought me down is, I do feel displaced by the kids, by her career. But I love her. God, I really wish I just would have talked to her about this. I wish I would have known. I wish I could have stepped to the, up to the plate. I wish I could have asked for what I needed. What I needed is... Validation, attention, spice, something different. Better communication skills, whatever it is. At some point, it slowly starts dawning on them what they really need. Know yourself and show yourself, and they know themselves. And then they're kind of trapped. Because now, how do you get out of it? How do you unring that bell? How do you now go back to your spouse, to your spouse, to your partner? I, I like combining spouse and partner, spartner. <laughs> How do you go back to your spouse or partner then and say, I figured it out. I was really feeling insecure and displaced. And I felt like I was aging. And I was afraid I was going to die and that I hadn't lived the way I really wanted to live. And I'm afraid I'm a disappointment to you. And I'm afraid we've just let things get stale. And I know I'm not good at communicating, but we tried counseling once before and it didn't really work. And I just felt hopeless and I was nervous about the money and it just all snowballed. But Here's what I want. I've realized I'm unhappy. I've realized we need some work. I really want to refresh our lives. I want to refresh our relationship. I want to do some things different. I don't really love these patterns that I find myself in and that I find us in. Can we work on that together? That's a hard thing to say after you've been cheating. That's a hard thing to say after you've been cheating. Because now, in your partner's mind, the affair is this elephant in the room. How do they get rid of the affair partner? Do you know how many people that I have worked with where the partner who is cheating is like, I am desperate to get rid of these affair partners? desperate. In my own situation, do you have any idea how desperate my husband was for these women to go away? Which sounds so weird because I hear you saying, uh, yeah, he chose them. He brought them in. Yes. 
And without fail, there is the realization that holy guacamole, this was a mistake. I chose this because I thought it was what I needed and wanted. And all of a sudden, the realization that this is not it is staggering. And it fills me with shame and embarrassment. And men do not handle shame well. Nobody handles shame well. But men, traditionally, in our culture, handle shame less well than women. Because our culture, our society, boys don't cry. Men don't break down. Don't be a sissy. Do the right thing. Man up. Men don't know how to hold and process shame. Men don't know how to sit in embarrassment, shame, remorse, to let those feelings move through them, to allow themselves to cry, to say, I'm sorry, to make amends, and to have that process happen within their bodies. Men do not do good saying, I'm sorry. Men have a hard time. I mean, if they can't ask for directions, and again, I'm being very stereotypical based on the fact that this is how we have culturally conditioned our men to be. Yes, is it changing? Yes, we are having more conscious men. We are having more, you know, whatever you want to call it. Men being in touch with their feelings. Men being in touch with their emotions. Women understanding that men are fallible. Women understanding that men are not knights in shining army. I mean. How would it feel to grow up thinking I am the frickin' knight in shining armor and I always have to rescue people and say the right thing and know the right thing and do the right thing? I always have to man up and do it even when I don't feel like it and even when I don't know. And if I don't know how to do it, and if I cry or break down or get confused, I'm going to be called a sissy and I'm going to be bullied and teased and my masculinity is at stake. It's hard for men. And this is not a pass. This is not an excuse. But I'm just saying it's really hard for men. So they don't know what's wrong with them. They don't know what they need. They have concocted this story in their head about why an affair is a really good idea, about why it's you and why they just need a new partner to do this for them. That's a whole other condition of masculinity. And then they've engaged in an affair and at some point have come to a realization that this is a big mistake and they don't know how to own it. And then there's this fear too. If I just tell the affair partner this was a big mistake and go away, what is she going to do? She's going to tell my wife. She's going to tell my family. She's going to tell my kids because now she has something over him. So he can't walk away because he's trapped. He can tell you, and that comes with risk too. Because how many partners, men, will then come back to you and say, I've made this horrible mistake, and I've had all of these aha moments and all of these come to Jesus meetings within myself, and I've processed my shame and my grief, and I've realized, and by the way, part of that, part of that was an affair. You should be happy because now I've figured myself out, but yeah, I had an affair. Do you think that's going to go over well? Do you think they think that's going to go over well? Holy heck no. They know that's not going to go over well. They know you, their partner, is not going to say, oh, wow, honey, I am so happy you figured yourself out. Let me hear about your needs and your desires now. Let me hear about your ideas to better yourself and to better our relationship. Huh, it was an affair. That's okay. Whatever it takes to have you figure yourself out, that's fine. No, 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 that's not going to happen. And they know that's not going to happen. But that's why they feel so trapped. That's why they want their affair partner just to freaking go away. 
so they don't have to deal with it and clean up this mess. Now think about this. Think about the irony of this too. They're in this mess because they didn't know how to clean up a mess. They're in the mess of an affair because they didn't know how to clean up a mess that they felt inside. They didn't know how to express what they were feeling inside. They didn't know what they were feeling inside. So all cheaters cheat for one reason. All cheaters cheat to fill a hole inside of them that they can't identify or express. All of their stem from that one problem. The wound inside is different for every man. The hole inside is different. But the reason they cheat is because they can't identify and express and talk about what's going on inside of them and what they need. Every single time. So going forward, let's talk about this and what that means going forward. What that knowledge means for you, practically speaking, if you choose to go forward with your partner, or if you just have to go forward with them co-parenting or something like that. If you are going to go forward with your partner in any form, What needs to happen is they, not you, they need to start getting a grip, a handle on. They need to figure out what is going on inside of them. They need to have the language to describe the emotions. They need to have that emotional intelligence. Of what am I feeling? When do I feel it? What do these feelings mean? These feelings aren't me. I am not my feelings. I am just having feelings. One of the things that my husband did in his therapy after our affair was he had a feelings journal, an emotions journal. And his job was to write down five feelings and emotions that he had every day. And you know what was interesting? He was blank. He was like, you mean there's more than happy, ticked off, hungry and tired? Like, what else is there? And literally. He would Google lists of emotions and he would start learning about them. And then we would practice after he started being able to identify them more easily. We would practice talking about them. Do you feel lost? Do you feel confused? Do you feel angry? Do you feel let down? Do you feel betrayed? Do you, how do you feel? And whenever you feel anger or rage, what's underneath that? Anger is a secondary emotion. I want you to think about this for yourself too. Anger is a secondary emotion. You're ticked about the affair, right? You're ticked that they didn't know what was going on inside. You're ticked that they can't identify their emotions. You're ticked that they would choose to go to somebody else besides you. You're ticked that. Think about all the things that you're angry at. Now go one step below that. What is the emotion that's really there? Why are you angry? Is it grief? Is it feeling unworthy? What is underneath that anger? Because the thing is, yes, 
all cheaters cheat for one reason. All cheaters cheat because there's a hole inside of them that they can't identify, they can't talk about, and they can't figure out how to fill because they can't identify and talk about it. And by the same token, what are we not identifying correctly in our own bodies? This betrayal recovery journey is a tough one. Our feelings are deep and complex. Feelings are so often more complex than we even want to realize because it feels so complicated. But everything reminds us of a time when, a childhood experience, something somebody said. What are you feeling during your own recovery experience? What do you truly need? What is the hole inside of you? What is the wound inside of you that is not the betrayal wound? One thing that I've been teaching and working with a lot is this. Betrayal exposes the truth. Not only about the person who cheated on us, but about the core wound inside of us. That we are here to heal. What is that core wound inside of you? That you are here to heal. What is that core wound inside of you? That was ripped open because of the betrayal. The betrayal didn't Cause that original wound. The betrayal exposed that original wound. <sighs> Sit with that a little bit. Your partner's betrayal did not cause your core wound. Your partner's betrayal exposed a core wound. And while they have their work cut out for them and learning about that empty place inside of them and learning to identify and express how they feel and what they need and how to communicate and who to communicate with. You also have the job of acknowledging your core wound as well. Of acknowledging that pain, that wounding, and figuring out for yourself what it is, where it comes from, how to address it, how to talk about it and communicate it, and with whom to talk about that wound with. Yes, betrayal is enormously unfair. It is enormously one-sided. It is enormously selfish. It is sad. It takes down everybody involved. It is one of the most destructive acts in the universe. And yet, what it exposes is truly but I'd like to say the golden heart of the matter. It exposes the truth of exactly what everybody involved needs to fix and address and process going
going forward. Including the person who cheated? Including the person who was betrayed? And even, you might not want to hear this, but even with the affair partner. It exposes everybody's core wound because let's be truthful here too. An affair partner is pretty damaged. A healthy, whole, complete person living in their power and integrity is not going to have an affair with somebody else's partner. Husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. A healthy, whole, complete person in integrity is not going to participate in something like that. And they have a hole inside of them, too. Here's the difference. And this matters. Because I hate, 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 hate it when people are like, well, how did you attract your partner having an affair? What was in your vibration that led you to be with a partner who cheated? Oh, let me tell you, nothing. There were contributing factors. There were things that I did that weren't perfect. There were things in our relationship that I helped sweep under the rug. I would hold up the rug. He would sweep it under. We would put the rug down and be like, "Mm mm-hmm, that's all good. We were both partners to that. We both co-created a lot of these problems, yes but I didn't do anything to cause that, to bring it upon myself. The person who cheats has a hole, a gaping hole that they can neither identify, explain, or fix. The person who they cheat with has a gaping hole that they cannot identify, explain, or know how to fix. The person who has been cheated on, we may have a gaping hole because we may also be doing our own toxic behaviors. But when it comes to cheating, we don't have a gaping hole. What we have is a wound. We have a wound that's maybe closed but is seeping. It's not scarred over. It's still a wound. We have a seeping wound. We have a red wound. We don't have a gaping hole, but we have a wound. And we've covered that wound with gauze and bandages, and we've painted over it and shellacked over it and decorated it with clothing or bank accounts or homes or our kids' extraordinary achievements. We've covered that wound with things. It's not a gaping hole, but it's a wound. And yes, there is resonance between our wound and our partner's gaping hole. But it is not our fault. Not once, not ever. And just like our partner didn't describe or talk about what was going on in them, too often we didn't talk about that wound either because it was so beautifully covered up and it was so neat and tidy. And it was so easy just to be like, yep, it's in there and I've got it. It's all buttoned up and it's good. Betrayal exposes the truth that it's a wound that it's not a fully healed scar. And that it is up to us to heal. It is up to us to heal our own scar, or to heal our own wound, to make it a scar, so it can heal properly this time. You've probably all heard the scenarios when somebody, like, breaks a bone and heals wrong, and then they have to re-break it. Mm Mm-hmm. Think about betrayal like that. Sometimes we have to cut something back open. We have to break it again. That's what betrayal does. Is it fun? No. 
Is it good? No. Is it fair? No. Can it allow for better healing? Oh, you betcha. Just like re-breaking a bone will allow for better healing if you set the bone and do it right the next time. If you break a leg, the bone heals, you have to re-break it, and then you don't set it, and you don't do anything right the next time, how is that bone going to heal? Not well. Not well at all. That's the work that you have to do, that I have to do, that we have to keep leaning into. We have to keep testing that wound, poking that wound. Okay, is it healing down here? Ouch. No, it's healed up here, but down here it's still pussy. That is our work to address that wound, to manage that wound, to make sure now that it's been ripped open again, that this time it gets healed right. That's our job. We can do that with our partner or alone. It doesn't matter. Ideally, our partner is doing their work, either with us or alone. It doesn't matter. It just matters that we're each doing our own work. That was one of the beautiful things that I went through with my husband too. When we decided to start really doing this work, when it became clear that, oh my gosh, he can't identify what he's feeling. He has all of this pain from all of these years and he's going through so many different things. And he has like 15 different major stressors and issues and they're all tied together and he can't communicate them and he doesn't know what they are and how they mean. And once he figured out like, I've got to talk with my spouse. I've got to talk with my spouse. I've got to talk with a counselor. I've got to talk with somebody who I, who, who truly has my best, best interest at heart. Not somebody with ulterior motives, not an affair partner. But once he figured out like, okay, there's this hole in me and I can't identify it and I don't know what's wrong and I need professional help and I need energetic help and I need you and I need books and I need all of that. Perfect. He had a plan. He had a path. And then I figured out, oh, this isn't just about him, 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 him. It's about me, 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 me. And what's going on inside and where is this wound and why did, oh, that wound. I got to do that for me. And he's got to do that for him. And that was the point where we each were committed because we each had our path and we were committed to our own healing. And while we hoped because we, we wanted to stay together, that was the choice that we were making. We wanted to figure it out. Staying together felt like it would be a really good thing to do, but we both said in our healing journey, I am committing to my own healing and I want you to commit to your own healing. And if that means once we're healed, we look at each other and say, nope, nope, not at all, then that's okay too. Because our goal wasn't to stay together at all costs. The goal was not for me to shellac over the wound. And to replaster over it and to use stronger building techniques to cover it up. That's not my goal. My goal is to heal it. And if being healed means I'm not with you anymore, then I'd rather be healed and not with you anymore than with you and faking it. And it was the same for him. He needed to start figuring out what he was feeling and what he was needing and what he was thinking. He needed to heal his own wounds from childhood, his own emotional and physical abuse. He needed to deal with his toxic family. He ended up cutting off a lot of people in his family because he realized this is truly toxic to me and I've been doing this dance and it's bringing me down and I am letting, I am betraying myself by taking care of everybody else's needs at my own expense. And it would be like, whoa, I am betraying myself by taking care of everybody's needs at my own expense. And we each decided to do the work for ourselves. And we were honest with each other in the way that we said, and if we end up together, wonderful. We've spent a lot of great years together and I have a lot of love for you. And if we end up apart, 
that's fine too. Because I love you enough to want you to be healed and healthy and whole. And you love me enough to want me to be fully healed and healthy and whole. And to not live a life where we both have to fake it. To not live a life where we put up and shut up. To not live the kind of life where at the end of the day we go, oh, God, if I only had that to do over again. And shouldn't that be the goal for everyone? I really think this is one of those shows that you're going to have to listen to, digest, and then come back to. And then maybe digest some more and come back to even a third time. There's simplicity and there's complexity. The simplicity is all cheaters cheat for one reason. All cheaters cheat as an excuse to fill something inside of them that they don't know how to fix, that they don't know how to identify. Cheating is always an excuse for something that they can't fix. The excuse, the reason, the dissatisfaction is different for everybody, and it's usually pretty complex. There's usually many different reasons, many different holes, many different pain points. We all have a lot of pain points. But the reason is always the same, that they can't identify it, and they can't fix it. So that's the simplicity. Cheaters cheat because they have a hole inside of them and they can't identify it and fill it. The complexity is what created that hole? It takes more than one shovel to dig a hole of that size. It takes more than one worker to dig a hole of that size. So now how do we start figuring out all of the different things that cause that pain? For us, very simple. Betrayal exposes the truth, not only of the other person, but of the wound inside of us that we need to address, that we came here to address. Are you going to address that wound? It's already been rebroken. It's already been ripped open. Are you just going to let it heal and hope for the best? Or are you going to use some strategy around healing that wound this time? Are you going to just hope for the best or are you going to use some strategy? I am here if you want help with that strategy. I have been there. I have been through my husband's betrayal, 15 years worth of betrayal with five women. I know that pain. I know that devastation. I know wanting to just vomit. Because you can't even wrap your head around what's happening. And I am happy to walk next to you on this path of exposing your own wound and understanding what's going on, of understanding your partner, the situation, and in co-creating new, beautiful healing so you can move forward, fully healed, and even, might I add, grateful for this experience. No, nobody likes a bone being rebroken. But in the end, you're grateful because you feel better. You can walk. And that's what this is like, too. Reach out to me. My coaching programs are truly transformative. And you will be held and supported in such a deep and powerful way. A fair recovery for women 
gmail.com or just send me an email, laura, L-O-R-A, at lauracheadle, L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E dot com. And we'll set up an appointment and we'll get you started right away. A fair recovery for women dot com. Because all cheaters cheat for one reason. And because betrayal exposes the truth of the wound inside of you that you are here to heal. Have an amazing week. And as usual, always remember to flaunt exactly who you are, because who you are is always more than enough. Do you feel betrayed by life, your body, or by someone that you love? You are not alone and you are not weak or overly emotional for feeling the way that you do. Betrayal is one of the most overwhelmingly painful experiences to navigate because it strikes at the core of who you are and what you are worth. No matter how gutted you feel, there is hope. You can flourish, not in spite of your experience, but because of it, I know. After 23 years of marriage, my world was shattered when I found out that my husband had been cheating on me with five different women for 15 years. I lost everything that day, my identity, my worth, and the future I had worked so hard to create. While it was a long and arduous journey back to myself, today I know who I am, what I want, and I am happier and more confident than I ever was before. I've got what I call naked self-worth, which is the ability to see know and love yourself for who you are, not for what you accomplished or for who you are in relation to others. No matter what has shattered your heart, if you're ready to get clear on who you are, what you want, and to learn how good life really can be, then life choreography is for you. Even if you feel too old or are too busy because you have kids at home and you're in charge of everything. Life Choreography is a comprehensive five-month, five-step program that empowers you to strip out of your labels, roles, and scripts, and to reveal yourself as you are, not as you think you should be. To learn more, go to NakedSelfWorth.com and download your free guide that shows you how to untangle yourself from the past. Reclaim your sexy and start re-choreographing life on your own terms so you can love and be loved for exactly who you most authentically are. Are you looking for a great way to make new connections and spread your wings? Revel is a new kind of social platform exclusively for women over 40, where you can do just that. With virtual and in real life events, authentic conversations, and no ads, Revel is the community site exclusively designed for like-minded, fabulous, fun women in midlife. Learn more and join for free at Hello Revel slash flaunt. That's hello, R-E-V is in Victor, E-L, dot com slash flaunt. Come join us. It's nourishing and super fun. Tune in next time to Flaunt. Find your sparkle and create a life you love after infidelity or betrayal with radio host and live choreographer Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Develop naked self-worth and reclaim your confidence, enthusiasm, and joy so you can create a life you love and embrace who you are today. Download your free Sparkle Through Betrayal Recovery Guide at NakedSelfWorth.com. 